How's it going guys, welcome back to our next episode, we're going to learn how to create something that allows for us to click on a link, which will then take us to a sub page, and then scroll down to the content that we want to link to. So to give you guys an example of why I decided to do this episode right now, if you were to just an HTML, create a link like I have inside my document here, that links to, for example, a ID called section three. We can do this, but only if ID section three is inside the current page that I'm inside of right now. Uh, and we can actually do this on a sub page without having to do it with JavaScript or jQuery. So what I would like to do is when I click the link, go to a sub page, which we can't do just in HTML, and then afterwards go to the section that we want to go to. And just to add a little bonus to it, I'd like to animate this so it actually scrolls down to the section without just jumping down. So what we're going to do here is first of all, as you guys can see right now, I have two pages, I have a index.html and a sub page.html, which right now we can see inside my browser here. So inside the index file, I have two buttons, I have a go to section three, which will make sense when we get to the sub page. And I have a go to the post section. So if I were to go to section three, well, which right now doesn't work because we, have, we haven't actually created the JavaScript to jQuery function that will actually allow for us to do this. You guys can see we have the sub page here with different sections in it. So right now we have section one, two, three, which is what I was supposed to scroll to. And then we have the post section down at the bottom here. So what we're going to do is when I click one of these buttons, I should scroll down to the section that I want to go to inside the sub page. So the way we're going to do this, just to explain how I set up my documents here, if I were to go to my index file, you guys can see I have a very basic HTML5 setup. I have my link to jQuery because we will be using jQuery in this episode, since this is a jQuery series. And I do have a link to the script that we're going to create in just a second, which will actually have the jQuery code that allow for us to scroll down to the section. Then I have a title tag, which right now has nothing inside of it. I have the styling of what I have inside my page here, which is just basic styling, you know, so we can actually see the box we want to click on. And then I have the actual links down here, just two links with a box and then some text inside of it. Now, one thing to note here is that I did actually put a link to the sub page, which is going to be called, or which is in fact called subpage.html. And I included the ID that I want to scroll to. So right now I said section three in the first one and the ID called post in the second one. So if we were to go inside the sub page.html and scroll down, as you guys can see, we just have styling here, just like in the index file. If I were to scroll down to the sections here, you guys can see we have four sections, which I showed you guys inside the website. Uh, and each of these have a class, so we can actually see different background colors. And the last two sections, which I want to create some kind of scroll event for, has an ID. And these are the IDs that we will have inside the index file. Now, do actually pay attention to that I have an ID post and an ID section three, but inside the sub page we call it scroll dash section three and scroll dash post. And this is going to make sense in just a second when we do actually create the actual script for it. So what I want to do now is I would like to create my main.js file, which is going to have the jQuery code inside of it. So I'm going to open up a new tab and save it inside our root folder as main.js. And inside this file, we need to go ahead and create the actual a document ready function, which we have inside jQuery that allow for us to just load all the code after loading everything else inside the website. So I'm going to go and say dollar sign parentheses documents dot ready parentheses. Then we're going to go ahead and say function inside the parentheses here. So we're going to say function parentheses curly brackets, move down to next line. And of course, remember to have the semicolon. And then inside of here, we can actually go ahead and create the code that we need to actually do this. So the first thing I would like to do is when I click this button here and go to my sub page, I would like to, when the page is loaded, check if we have some kind of ID inside the URL, because right now if I were to actually click on one of these buttons, such as the post section, you guys can see that inside my URL, I have sub page.html ID post. So I want to check if we have any kind of IDs inside the URL up here. 
Okay, so inside my code, I would like to say we have a variable, which is just going to be a JavaScript variable called page underscore URL. And it's going to be equal to window dot location dot hyper reference semicolon, which is basically just going to get the URL of the current page that we're inside of. Then I'm going to go down to the next line. I'm going to create another variable, which is going to be the ID that we get from the page URL. So I'm going to say we have a variable called page underscore ID. It's going to be equal to page underscore URL. So we're basically getting the URL from up inside this variable here. Then we're going to say dot and create a function called substring, which means we're going to get part of the string we have up here, which is going to be the, the actual link to the website or the page we're inside of. So I'm going to say parentheses. And inside the parentheses here, I would like to go ahead and say we have the page underscore URL. And I would like to get the last index of, which is another function we have inside JavaScript. Index of. Do pay attention to that I'm using a capitalized I and a capitalized O. Parentheses. And I want to check if we have any kind of a symbol or something inside this string here, which is going to be the URL. Now I do that by saying I want to check for a hashtag or an ID. And then afterwards, I would like to say, okay, now we have the position of this hashtag inside the URL, but it's not the hashtag I want to get the position of. I want to get whatever string is inside what comes after the hashtag. So we're going to say plus one right next to it here. So we're getting a index uh, of the hashtag, which is going to be the location of it, but we don't want the location of the hashtag. We want the, you know, what comes afterwards. So we're saying plus one. So after we have this, we can actually go ahead and check if we have an index that we got from up here, which is equal to any of the strings that we have inside our IDs inside the page, in, inside the subpage at least. So what we can do is we can create an if statement and inside where we check the condition, we're going to say if page underscore ID, which is the value of what we have up here, is equal to a string called section three. Then I would like to do something down here. Just gonna move it down. Now, what I want to do is I want to animate the scroll inside the website. So if we have section three inside the URL, let's actually go ahead and just to show you guys, alert out what we have inside page ID when I click a button, like so. If I were to go back to the website, just refresh, you guys can see now we echoed out uh, the location of where we are right now. If we were to click one of these buttons, you guys can see we get section three because we have section three inside DID here. If we were to go back, click on the, uh, the post section here, you guys can see we get post. So going back and going into our code, I would like to delete the alert because I just want to use it for testing purposes. And inside my if statement, we're going to create a selector, which is going to select our HTML and body. So we can actually, you know, grab the HTML and body and change the scrolling of our document inside the website. So we're going to say HTML, comma, space, body. So we're selecting both elements inside uh, the selector here. And then I would like to animate the scroll position. So we're going to use the animate function or the animate effect we have inside jQuery. So we're going to say animate. Then we're going to say parentheses. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to say curly brackets. Move down to the next line. And of course, we want to add a semicolon at the end here. Then inside of our animate, we would like to say we want to animate something. I'm going to select the scroll top. Inside our website, we're going to say colon, which means that right now we're going to make changes to the scroll top uh, inside the website, which right now tells us the current position of uh, the scroll from the top of the browser. So right now, if we were to actually load the page, scroll top is going to be equal to zero because we're zero pixels from the top. 
And then I want to change it so it's not zero pixels. So we're going to add a new value right afterwards here, meaning that we're going to get the current position of the ID that has a section three inside of its name. The way we do that is by creating another selector. So we're going to say select double quotes and we want to select the ID that has a scroll dash and then whenever the name is inside the page ID up here, it's going to be the ID that we want to scroll to. So I'm going to say space plus and then add the page underscore ID. So we can actually combine the string with our ID from inside uh, the variable up here. Okay, so right now this is going to be equal to scroll dash section three if we were to click the first button. Now, you might be asking why did I decide to use scroll dash in front of what we did here? That is because if I were to go inside my sub page here, you guys can see I added inside the ID. And the only reason I decided to do this is because if I were to call anything inside this website, section three, then we're going to confuse the code. So to make sure that this ID has specifically meant for actually getting the scroll, I decided to just name it scroll dash. Okay, so to make sure we didn't get any kind of errors in the future. Inside of here again, inside our main.js, I'm going to say, well, right now we're going to grab this ID here, but I also want to get the position of the scroll dash uh, section three or post. So I'm going to say we want to have a offset parentheses from the top, which is going to have a value based off how far from the top it is inside the website. So right now, if we were to save this and just go down to the next line here, because we need to add a second parameter. So I'm going to say comma space, which is going to be the amount of time it needs to take to scroll down to the bottom. So I'm going to say we have maybe a thousand milliseconds, which is going to be one second. If we were to go back inside the browser now, you guys will notice that when I refresh, click on section three, we then scroll down to the section three inside the browser here. Now, there's a couple of examples where when we scroll down to section three, for example, um, if whatever I targeted with the ID is not going to be, let's say I scroll and it stops here which is not good, or it may, maybe it stops here because the ID is inside the text and not inside the container, then it's going to mess up the title a bit if it stops right here because it doesn't look nice. So maybe I want to stop it a bit before the actual section where it starts. So to show you guys an example of this, let's actually go ahead and go back inside the code and say that, okay, so now we checked if we clicked on section three, let's go ahead and check if we click on the post button. So I'm going to say else if, parentheses, curly brackets, and I'm just going to copy what we have inside the condition up here, but instead I'm going to check for post. Then I'm going to copy what we have down here because we need the same code, like so. And after we say top, so again, basically what we're doing here is we want to say we want to set a new scroll top, which is going to be a new position from the top of the browser. I want to set it to uh, the position of the element that I chose, which is the post ID and check how far from the top the, the post ID is and set that as a new value. But what we can also do here is after we say, okay, we want to get the value from the top with the ID, we can then add or subtract a certain number of pixels. So we were to say, I want to subtract 20 pixels. I could say 20, just like so. If I were to go back inside the browser and go back to the front page, refresh, click the post section, you guys will notice it scrolls down. Well, we can't actually see it here because we can't actually scroll further down the page. Let's go back and do this to our section three instead. Go back, refresh, click it. Now you guys will see that it stops 20 pixels before getting to section three. Again, if I wanted to do it after, I can just add a plus instead. Let's actually change this to a hundred just to do a bit of exaggeration. Go back, refresh and go to section three. You guys can see it goes down hundred pixels below the section three section. So this is how we can actually scroll down to a certain link or a certain section of a sub page using jQuery, which is something that a lot of people use when they want to, you know, go to another page with information, but they don't just suddenly want to jump to the content and they want to actually have a, 
animated scroll or something going on to make it look a bit nice. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.